Some folks called it a solid workhorse, others a throwaway engine you couldn't trust. It showed up in trucks, buses, boats, and even in some farm equipment. But no matter where it turned up, it always left folks wondering, was it really a cat engine or something else entirely? See, there's a part of the 3208 story that most people never knew. A quiet detail that explains why it ended up in so many different machines. Once you hear the full story, you'll see the Cat 3208 in a whole new light. The Cat 3208. It was a V8 diesel engine you could find just about anywhere in the 70s and 80s. Ford used them in their medium-duty trucks, and later GMC used them too. The 3208 powered plenty of Bluebird and Thomas buses, taking kids to school all across the country. Fire trucks? Sure, its compact size and power made it a good fit for emergency vehicles. And for boats, Cat offered marine versions that cranked out up to 435 horsepower. And you'd even find it in some farm equipment. You'd find it in New Holland combines, the TR-70, TR-85, and TR-95. A few Massey Ferguson 1500s and 1800s ran them too. Even some Oliver tractors. But why did it seem like it was everywhere? It comes down to timing. In the 1970s, diesel was taking over. Gas engines weren't cutting it anymore, especially for hauling and heavy work. OEMs needed diesel power, and they needed it fast. They wanted something compact, something they could drop into their existing designs without major changes. And the 3208 fit the bill. A medium weight, V8 diesel that could fit in a truck frame, a bus chassis, or a boat hull. It wasn't the only engine out there, but it was readily available. It had the horsepower, and it got the job done most of the time. But if you talk to folks about the 3208 today, you'll get a lot of different stories. Some will tell you it was a true cat engine, through and through. Others will swear it wasn't really a cat engine at all and that it never belonged in farm equipment. And then you've got the guys who say they had one in a Ford but it wasn't a cat. Or maybe it was. Confusing? Absolutely. And it's no surprise so many people have different stories about the 3208. The Caterpillar 3208 was introduced in 1975 as a V8 diesel engine with eight cylinders and two cylinder heads, designed for medium-duty applications. With a displacement of 10.4 liters, 636 cubic inches, it featured a bore of 4.5 inches and a stroke of 5 inches. Compression ratios varied between 15.5 to 1 and 16.5 to 1, depending on the specific configuration. The engine's rotation was counterclockwise from the flywheel end, a detail that required attention during maintenance and installation. One of the distinguishing features of the 3208 was its parent bore block design, meaning the cylinders were cast directly into the engine block without removable liners. This approach reduced manufacturing complexity and weight but made overhauls more challenging, as worn cylinders required machining or block replacement rather than simple liner swaps. The engine employed a sleeve metering fuel injection system, differing from the scroll type systems used in some other CAT engines. This setup contributed to its performance characteristics, especially in applications requiring consistent power output. Cooling capacities varied. Naturally aspirated models held approximately 12.5 gallons, while turbocharged versions required around 14.8 gallons to manage the additional heat generated. Oil capacities ranged from 3.2 gallons in naturally aspirated engines to 4 gallons in turbocharged models, with CAT recommending oil changes every 250 hours, a guideline that operators sometimes extended. Weight-wise, the 3208 ranged from about 1,600 pounds in its base form to nearly 2,000 pounds in higher horsepower marine configurations. The engine was designed to deliver power at higher RPMs, with a sweet spot between 2800 and 3000 RPM, making it suitable for applications like trucks and boats, but less ideal for tasks demanding low-end torque like farming. In terms of performance, the 3208's horsepower varied depending on the application. 
In trucks and farm equipment, it typically ranged between 180 and 250 horsepower. Marine applications saw higher outputs with some configurations reaching up to 435 horsepower, necessitating enhanced cooling and fuel systems to handle the increased stress. The engine's design made it compact for its horsepower, facilitating installation in various vehicles, including trucks, buses, and combines. Its power-to-weight ratio was considered favorable for medium-duty applications. However, it wasn't without its drawbacks. The 3208 lacked low-end torque, which is crucial for tasks like plowing or hauling heavy loads at low speeds. Additionally, its high RPM design wasn't ideal for applications requiring sustained low-speed operation. Cooling issues were another concern. While some of these problems stemmed from the engine itself, many were attributed to how equipment manufacturers designed their cooling systems. Installing an engine that ran hot into machines not adequately equipped to dissipate that heat led to performance issues. Significant design differences existed between naturally aspirated and turbocharged versions of the 3208. Notably, naturally aspirated blocks typically lacked oil cooling jets under the cylinders, and turbocharged blocks featured different castings to accommodate the turbocharger mount. These variations also influenced compression ratios and sometimes oil pan capacities. When it came to maintenance, the parent board design meant that overhauls were more complex and costly compared to engines with replaceable liners. This led some to label the 3208 as a throwaway engine, though this characterization wasn't entirely fair. With proper care and appropriate application, the 3208 could achieve impressive longevity, often surpassing 10,000 operational hours. Practical considerations for engine swaps between different vehicle types, like combines to trucks, included varying front crank pulley configurations, different oil filter types, and minor differences such as dipstick locations. While the overall engine fit between components like the radiator and transmission was generally good, specific original equipment manufacturer castings could also introduce minor variations. So, the CAT 3208 was a versatile engine that served well in various applications. Its design choices reflected the engineering priorities of its time, balancing performance, weight, and manufacturing considerations. While it had its limitations, particularly in low-speed, high-torque scenarios, it proved to be a reliable workhorse in the right settings. Opinions on the 3208 are mixed, for some, it was a reliable, easy-to-maintain engine that could deliver years of service when used correctly. For others, it was a frustrating, underpowered design that struggled in certain applications and wasn't worth rebuilding once it wore out. In fire service, the 3208 found a solid following. Many fire departments across North America relied on it in their pumpers and rescue trucks, where the engine's ability to deliver steady power at higher RPMs matched the demands of emergency response. Operators appreciated its straightforward design, and mechanics found it easy to maintain. It wasn't flashy, but it got the job done. In the medium-duty truck market, it powered models like the Ford L-Series and GMC's medium-duty lines. Operators who stayed within the engine's limits, keeping loads reasonable and running at higher RPMs, often reported good service life. Some engines surpassed 200,000 miles without major issues, however, Pushing the engine beyond its design often caused problems. Lugging it at low RPMs, overloading it, or neglecting maintenance led to overheating, blown head gaskets, and accelerated cylinder wear. In marine applications, the 3208's strengths became clear. Boats operate at steady, higher RPMs for long periods, which suited the engine's high revving design. With proper installation and routine maintenance, 3208's in marine service routinely logged 20,000, 30,000, and in some cases over 40,000 hours. The compact V8 layout, combined with the availability of turbocharged models with high horsepower, made it a popular choice for many vessels. The story was different on the farm. While some agricultural equipment used the 3208, most notably in certain Massey Ferguson four-wheel drive tractors and New Holland combines, the engine's characteristics often clashed with farming demands. Farmers reported issues with overheating during fieldwork, especially in machines not designed with adequate cooling systems. The engine's high RPM power curve and lack of low-end torque 
made it less effective for tasks requiring heavy pulling or sustained lugging. When engines did wear out, the parent bore block design, requiring costly machining or block replacement, led to the throwaway engine label that still lingers today. Much of the 3208's reputation, good or bad, comes down to how it was used. In the right application, trucks, boats, or fire trucks, where engines operate at higher RPMs with consistent loads, the 3208 could be a solid performer. In the wrong application, particularly in farming, where engines are lugged under heavy loads at low RPMs, it could become a costly problem. Adding to the mixed opinions was a lingering confusion over the 3208's true identity. Some operators remembered them as cat engines, while others insisted they were something else entirely. Some recalled seeing them painted blue or labeled with a different name. Some swore they were in Ford tractors, while others flatly denied it. This uncertainty and the varying stories from the field only added to the engine's complex reputation. While the 3208 struggled in certain land-based applications, it found a near-perfect home on the water. For many marine operators, the engine's design was exactly what they needed. The 3208's high RPM power curve, often criticized in trucking and agricultural use, matched the demands of marine propulsion. Boats require engines that can run at steady, higher RPMs for long stretches, and that's where the 3208 shined. Its peak power range between 2,800 and 3,000 RPM was ideal for cruising speeds on many vessels. Cooling was another factor. Marine engines are typically cooled by seawater systems, which provided the 3208 with an abundant, reliable source of cooling that land-based equipment often lacked. The overheating issues that plagued 3208s in tractors and trucks weren't a concern at sea. This allowed the engine to operate efficiently at higher loads without the risk of heat-related failures. The 3208's compact V8 layout also made it a favorite for boat builders and retrofits. Its relatively small footprint compared to inline six alternatives allowed it to fit in tight engine rooms where space was limited. And for operators looking for more power, the high horsepower turbocharged version was plenty for most fishing boats, tugs, and yachts. In the marine world, the 3208 wasn't seen as a throwaway engine. It was a reliable, well-matched power plant that delivered what operators needed. Consistent performance, decent fuel efficiency, and a manageable maintenance schedule. And with proper installation and care, it could run for years in boats of all kinds. One of the biggest complaints centered around the 3208's parent bore block design. Unlike many heavy-duty diesels that used replaceable cylinder liners, the 3208's cylinders were cast directly into the block. This simplified manufacturing and reduced weight, but it created a major problem when the cylinders wore out. Instead of a straightforward liner replacement, operators faced the costly option of machining the block to accept oversized pistons or scrapping the engine entirely. This design choice contributed to the 3208's throwaway engine reputation. However, some experienced repair shops developed workarounds. A few machinists found ways to install dry sleeves into worn cylinders, salvaging blocks that otherwise would have been discarded. While not a factory-approved solution, this approach provided an option for operators willing to invest the time and expense into saving a worn engine. It wasn't common practice, but it showed the 3208 wasn't always a lost cause when the bores wore out. The 3208 also used a two-ring piston design in its early models, one compression ring and one oil control ring, which was unusual for diesel engines at the time. While it helped reduce friction and improve efficiency, it also led to increased blow-by and higher oil consumption, especially as engines aged. Later versions and aftermarket rebuild kits sometimes switched to a three-ring piston design to address this issue, but by then the damage to the engine's reputation was done. Cooling system performance was another recurring problem. 
While the engine itself ran hot by design due to its high revving nature, many of the machines it was installed in didn't have cooling systems properly matched to handle the heat. This was especially true in agricultural equipment and some truck applications. Overheating led to head gasket failures, warped cylinder heads, and reduced engine life. The 3208's high RPM power curve also limited its versatility. Unlike larger inline-six engines such as the Cummins 855 or John Deere 466, which were designed for heavy torque at low speeds, the 3208 made its power higher in the rev range. This worked fine in trucks or boats that ran steady at higher speeds, but it made the 3208 ill-suited for tasks like plowing or heavy pulling, where torque at lower RPMs is critical. Another issue was the sleeve metering fuel injection system. While innovative, it was more sensitive to wear, contamination, and maintenance than other fuel systems. Water in the fuel or dirty filters could lead to premature wear of the injection sleeves, causing poor performance or complete failure. These flaws weren't always a problem. When the 3208 was used in the right application and well-maintained, it could deliver thousands of hours of reliable service. But when used outside its design limits, the engine struggled. Farmers who expected it to perform like a big-bore inline diesel were often disappointed. Truckers who overloaded it or lugged it at low speeds ran into problems. And operators who skipped maintenance, like timely oil changes, valve adjustments, and fuel system care, found out the hard way that the 3208 didn't tolerate neglect. Over the years, many operators have scratched their heads over the 3208. Some remember seeing them in Ford trucks painted blue, labeled as the Ford V636. Others insist it was a Caterpillar engine all along. That confusion stems from the unique partnership between Ford and Caterpillar and the way the engine was initially branded. At that time, Ford faced a growing problem. They needed a reliable diesel engine for their medium-duty trucks. Ford's gasoline engines, like the 534, were falling behind in a market that was shifting rapidly toward diesel. But Ford didn't have a diesel V8 ready for production, and developing one from scratch would take years and enormous investment. Meanwhile, Caterpillar was working on a medium-duty diesel design, what would eventually become the 3208. Cat had the engineering expertise but lacked a guaranteed customer to justify mass production. That's where the partnership began. Ford approached Caterpillar with a proposal. They needed a diesel V8 for their trucks, and they needed it fast. Ford was willing to pay for Caterpillar's technical know-how. In fact, Ford reportedly funded a significant portion of the engine's development. Some estimates say up to 90%. The deal allowed Cat to develop the engine they wanted while giving Ford an exclusive diesel option for their medium-duty truck line. The first engines from this collaboration weren't called the Cat 3208. They were labeled as the Ford V636 diesel by Caterpillar, a name that reflected the engine's displacement of 636 cubic inches. They were painted Ford blue, matched to the company's truck branding, and went into Ford L-Series and C-Series trucks starting in the early 1970s. For many operators, these engines didn't look like a Cat product, they didn't have a cat badge and the color matched Ford's trucks. It's easy to see how the confusion started. After Ford's exclusive period ended, Caterpillar began marketing the engine more broadly as the 3208. The blue paint was replaced with cat yellow, and the engine started appearing in other applications, GMC trucks, marine equipment, and even some farm machinery. But the legacy of that early collaboration remained. Many operators who ran the Ford 5636 thought of it as a Ford engine, while others recognized its Caterpillar roots. Technically, both were right. The engine was designed by Cat but developed for Ford's needs, funded by Ford, and painted in Ford colors.